to blend natural gas into the oil so that you can make a hydrocarbon out of it that you can then put in your automobile. So you have to frack for the gas, take the gas, use it to pump the oil out of the ground, then you take the oil that you pumped out of the ground, you take it to what's called an upgrader, you have to run a whole bunch of water through it to get the sand and the clay out, and then you blend natural gas into it just so you can make a semi-refined product that then gets sent like you used to do with sweet crude, you can send that to a refinery and you actually make gasoline out of it. So, I mean, the reason why when people talk about the footprint of the tar sands, why it's so much more energy intensive and uses so much more water than, uh, than old fashioned sweet crude did, it's not just because of the fact that it's mixed with sand and clay, it's because it's not even good fuel to begin with. I mean, this is like an alcoholic drinking mouthwash, right? Like we're talking about, we're running out of the easy to find stuff and now we're just using whatever we can find that's left on the planet. And of course, we should be spending that money on solutions. We should be shutting down the coal-fired power plants. We should be investing in the public transit instead of the highways. You know, we need to be actually looking at the solutions now while we still have the energy and we still have the economy that allows for that transition to be made. But one of the problems here in BC is, and I, and I support alternative energy, of course, and we're going to talk a bit more about that. But one thing you need to know is a lot of these so-called green energy projects in BC are actually producing energy that's being used to run a coal mine, or they're providing energy that's being run to, to used to run a fracking operation. Um, the demand for energy that's coming in BC is almost entirely, like a large, large portion of it, is coming from industry. It's not coming from you and I and our consumption needs. But of course, you know, the, the, the industry just tells you to turn off your lights and take shorter showers. Of course we need to do that kind of stuff. But you and I can do that forever. We could all move into caves. It wouldn't change the fact that the major demand is coming from industry. And a lot of these so-called green projects that are being subsidized, like the run of the river power projects, you guys have all heard of that. You know, some of them are damming streams and rivers that have salmon in them. Some of them are, you know, running power lines through provincial parks. Yeah, they're, they're a big problem. And many of them are owned and operated by General Electric or the same big companies that own the coal mines. So it's important to remember that, you know, as much as we need alternative energy, we need to be smart about it. It needs to be done in a way that actually serves the needs of our communities. It needs to be done in a way where we're actually setting the agenda, where we're actually getting the benefit from it, and where it isn't just the same big companies kind of greenwashing and telling us, okay, now we're doing green energy, you should subsidize that. And that's exactly what we're doing. They're giving them sweetheart deals on our rivers. We're giving away the rights to dam these rivers all over the place. And we're getting very, very little benefit out of it at the end of the day. So I think it's important to recognize the relationship between all these issues. You know, really we need a plan for energy. We need a plan for transportation. And right now we're just reacting to whatever corporation wants to come here and make money because that's why we get a tiny little slice of the pie. You know, we're saying, okay, if you'll show up with your capital, we'll do whatever you want. And the truth is, we're the ones with the power, because we've got the resources. But in a, in a way, it's, it's what's called the resource curse. You know, a lot of places like Nigeria, other places on planet Earth, like in Latin America, where people have resources. You know, you'd think people would be really rich in Africa, or they'd be really rich in Latin America, because they've got gold and they've got oil. But what we see is exactly the opposite. We see these, you know, massive concentrations of wealth. We see people really, really, really poor. And in fact, the people who try to stand up for themselves become the victims. The people who try to stand up and say no to these projects are attacked. You know, they're literally by paramilitary groups in some places in the world. You know, and what we're seeing in Canada is the, the poorest people and the people who really should have the control, especially right here in BC. You know, uh, I should say thank you to the Coast Salish people whose land we're on right now. You know, in a, in a sense, it's almost uh, the wrong choice of words, I think, to say that, that, that we're occupying Vancouver, because Vancouver already is occupied. You know, and uh, the Occupy movement, I think, is important because we're reclaiming the idea. But I think we really need to be thinking about, you know, whose land this is to begin with. And, uh, and of course, a lot of the land where those minerals are, uh, like that, the northern area where the Enbridge pipeline would go through, I mean, this is indigenous land, and it's, uh, and it's land that I believe that pipeline will never be built on because of the strength of those communities and their ability to stand up for themselves. Yeah. Woo! But it's going to take support from people like you and me who live here in Vancouver, who you know, have a, a much more privileged kind of a life and have a lot of power because of our privilege. And I think we need to be, you know, take that responsibility seriously to, to stand up for those indigenous people. But it's also important to remember that you know, there's, there's First Nations people whose land we're standing on right now, the Musqueam, the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh. You know, and these communities haven't been consulted any more than you or I have. And in fact, they've got a, a constitutional right under fair, informed, prior consent 
It says they're supposed to be consulted, and they should actually not only be consulted, but they need to sign off on these projects before they go forward. And the expansions that we've already seen in tanker traffic and in oil pipelines have happened without the consent of the Indigenous people. So, uh, you know, the same issues that apply up north apply here as well. Uh, and increasingly, the communities here are starting to stand up for themselves and say no to these projects. So, uh, I, once again, I'll just say this. If you're, if you're interested in getting involved in the campaigns around oil tankers in the Burrard Inlet, we're going to have a meeting here Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We're going to try to keep doing that uh, on a weekly basis uh, as long as this camp is still here. You can also find information on the internet. Uh, there's a website, tankerfreebc.org. That's tankerfreebc.org. Uh, and that website has a lot of information about what's going on in the Burrard Inlet right now. It's also got some information about the uh, Keystone Pipeline and the um, Enbridge Pipeline, which are basically three fuses on the world's largest carbon bomb, to steal the term from Bill McKibben, who organized that protest at the White House. Um, you know, the, the tar sands really is the biggest carbon bomb on the planet. It's the number one source of oil for the United States the biggest consumer of oil and here we are the potential gateway to the Asia Pacific um, you know that we're here we are saying that our economy in the future our, our current premier says will be based on exports to Asia the expansion of our coal exports the expansion of our gas exports the expansion of our oil exports through the Enbridge pipeline and the Kinder Morgan pipeline and I, I, I guess what I'm saying is that's the gateway to global warming and if this is a gateway, it's up for us to decide what goes through that gateway and to be responsible gatekeepers. You know, what's actually going to come through that gateway? Do you guys want to be the gateway to global warming here? No. No. So then the question is, what can we do about it? And I think, you know, there's a lot we can do. If you're worried about the tar sands, we have more ability to shut down the tar sands, to stop the growth of the tar sands right here in Vancouver than people do almost anywhere else on planet Earth. Because right there in Burrard Inlet is where those tankers are coming through right now, which is the only way that that oil is getting down to the west coast of the United States and getting to the new expanding markets in Asia. I don't think the Enbridge pipeline is ever going to get built. We're all going to have to fight it. It's going to be a big fight. But it isn't there yet, and I don't think it's going to get built anytime soon. I, I went to the uh, All Nations Energy Summit a couple of years ago in Smithers, close to Smithers in Morristown. And there was First Nations all the way from Fort Chippewan, the Carrier Sakani, the Wet'suwet'en, the Haida, and the Heisla. They all signed on to a document saying that they would do anything that it took to stop that pipeline from getting built. There's longhouses being built along the path of the pipeline, and all it takes is blocking it in one point to stop the whole thing from getting done. But the, the problem is, is that we got these tankers right now in that existing pipeline. And if we're going to do anything about stopping the tar sands, this is where the oil is going to get out the soonest. This is where they can expand it without us, you know, even having a legal process to stop them. But we can stop them. But it's going to take us organizing and saying no to it. So uh, I'm, I guess I'm inviting you to get involved in this process because it takes all of us. But the first thing is just telling your friends and neighbors. Because most people don't even know this is happening. You know, I talk to people every day about this and they don't even know that every week there's two tankers at least that pass through that inlet carrying three times as much as was spilled by the Exxon Valdez. That's three times as much. And if, that, if there was a spill the same size as the Exxon Valdez, that would go all the way from Puget Sound all the way up past Prince Rupert. You know, you'd be talking about changing our coastline forever. And of course, without even a spill happening, just the normal operating procedures of a pipeline and these tankers, you see drastic amounts of oil being spilled. There's tar balls all over our beaches in Burnaby. There's oil that's in the water, there's oil that's in the land, it's in our lungs, it's coming out of those refineries. You know, we're living in and around oil in British Columbia, right here in Vancouver. But we can also, that also gives us a lot of power. Because this is ground zero, because this is the center of the storm, it means we can do a lot more than almost anybody else could to slow the growth of the tar sands and to really turn things around. This is one of the most livable communities on Earth. But, you know, as we build those highways, as we expand that kind of infrastructure, that's saying we want to be more like, you know, Los Angeles or, or the sprawl that we see in the United States where we eat up our farmland. And it's still not too late to stop that either. That South Fraser Perimeter Road is not anywhere close to built. And it's got a lot, a lot of opposition. There's two lawsuits, one from the uh, Burns Bog Conservation Society and another one from local indigenous people who are worried about their burial grounds being covered up by highways. And we can stop that highway, which reduces the demand for the oil. And we can stop the expansion of the pipeline that's proposed. And ultimately, we can phase out all the oil tankers other than the ones that we need for our own consumption. Do you think that's the thing that we need to do?